All right, how's it going, y'all? And I'm very excited because today we're finally able to start showing videos of Synology's DSM-7 Beta. I've been working in the DSM-7 Alpha for a while and I've been really impressed, but Synology would not allow anybody to release any videos or talk about it. And so, well, I've been very excited, but not be, been able to tell anybody. So DSM-7 is a huge update to Synology's Disk Station Manager, which is the operating system that runs Synology Disk Stations, which are their primary products. All right, so Synology's DSM-7 update is a huge update for both businesses and regular home users. Businesses are gonna get better multi-site management as well as better SSD caching and things like that. And home users are gonna get a much snappier user interface as well as some awesome features such as Synology Photos and also having just a much cleaner user interface for when you need to do things. Honestly, I think a lot of it just makes a lot more sense now and it's a lot easier to get picked up and going, which is what Synology is really going for. Overall, I think Synology is moving in a really positive direction with this. So this was all the result of Synology's 2021 and beyond video, where they went over all their new software features they're planning in the next few years. It's a great video if you want to watch it. It's about 40 minutes long, but it really introduces what the company is planning on doing. And it's got three different breakout sections. And so now I want to go over what this video is going to be. And then we're going to go into looking through the new UI of DSM-7. So this video is really going to be focused on, hey, the look and the feel and all the new features within DSM-7. And then in subsequent videos, I'm going to be going over specific features such as photos and even how to install DSM-7 on a virtual machine. So the reason I said on a virtual machine and not on your main machine is because quite frankly, it's a beta. I would not recommend running the Synology DSM-7 beta on your main NAS because quite frankly, it's a beta. You do not want to take the risk of there being a technical glitch and all of a sudden all of your data on your NAS is unrecoverable. Even if you have backups, how good are those backups and how long is it going to take you to restore? I just would not recommend running a beta on a production piece of hardware like this. But the nice thing is, you can try out all the great new features of Synology DSM-7 without having to install the beta on your main NAS. Instead, you can just spin up in a virtual machine and get to see everything that's happening without running any risk of hardware loss. Virtual machines can crash and burn, but they are not going to affect the host operating system unless something goes critically wrong, which is incredibly hard to do, even from a virus perspective. All right, so now that I've addressed that, let's go ahead and log into Synology DSM-7. So for people who are interested, I'm currently running Synology DSM-7 Beta on my Synology DS-718 Plus. This was the first NAS I ever bought before I realized I needed much more storage. And for a while I was using it as an offsite backup. But when DSM-7 was first announced, I actually got it back from my mom's house and instead replaced it with my Raspberry Pi offsite backup, which runs the exact same thing. And now I've got my NAS for testing things on. So without further ado, this is the new login screen. It is a much cleaner, much more professional look and it is customizable because this is really used for businesses. Synology's goal is for businesses to have this running and for employees to be logging into this portal all the time, just in the way that you would log into Google. So let's just go ahead and sign in and you're already probably going to see how much faster it is, even though it's currently in beta. And just like that, it is so much quicker and just so much more responsive. So this is the new look of it. It is a really beautiful interface and honestly, it is so much more responsive. Click on the control panel, it opens immediately. Everything's got this new look to it and everything just loads so much quicker. It is just night and day how much faster this is than previous times. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this and we're gonna start looking through the different features of DSM beta. So a big one is storage manager and I love the new way they've done this. Also, did you see how fast I opened? It's just so much more responsive and it just feels so much nicer. I remember when I was first using Synology on DSM-6 and I was just like, how is it this slow? And I searched the forums and it just was that slow. It's because the backend engine was slow and so there's really nothing you could do to accelerate it that much. But from looking at it, as far as I know, I think they may have rewritten serious portions of the DSM-7 web interface because it is so much more responsive. It is just night and day. So this is the new storage manager and it shows you so much easier. This is which bay is which because it now gives you the direction. It is so much nicer and you can just go and say, okay, let's see drive number two. Click on it, boom, you're in the new drive. 
you can see everything so much easier and I think it just makes this all so much more clear. As you can see, this is my test setup. So I've got two shuck drives just thrown in here just because it's what I've got going for me. And we'll go back into the overview. And the overview really is just so much more of an overview now. And I like it a lot more. And so if you look over here, they've also done a great thing, especially for new users, is they've put storage in a single tab. I remember when I first started out, there was something called a volume, and then there was a storage pool. And I really had no idea what the difference was between them, and it was always really confusing. Now it's just one single tab, and it shows you that there are two different things, and I think that that will really help people understand how to get started with it, especially when they're starting out. Another thing that they've done, and I've not gotten to test yet, is the SSD cache. The SSD cache is supposed to have a massive performance increase, and I'm really excited to see that. You're actually going to be able to just add in SSD caching without slowing down your system at all. You're going to be able to start it, and everything will keep running. Previously, when you added or removed an SSD cache, the entire volume had to go offline for a few seconds, which would disrupt any workflows you were on. So now, you can just run it in line, start and stop it, and nothing else will notice. It's a really nice thing, and I think this is going to be huge in production environments. It's not going to be that big of a deal for most home users until people start really running 10 gig environments with multiple users. If you have multiple users on a one gig environment who are doing a bunch of different things that have a lot of random read and writes, you can start to see it. I've actually seen SSD performance increases using Final Cut Pro because when you scrub through a timeline, you're doing a ton of random read and writes on a disk. And if your disk has to look at every single one of those scrub timelines for you, it's going to take a lot because the spindle is going to be constantly having to go to different parts of the disk to read the data for you. But if that's in an SSD cache, you'll be able to access it nearly instantly compared to the latency of a disk. So I'm definitely going to be making another video on that. And we're also going to go into one more thing, which is the global settings, which has this advanced repair settings. So another big thing about DSM-7 is they've made rebuilds for raids so much faster. First off, there's this option right here, fast repair, which does not clone over unused data. So previously, whenever you were rebuilding an array, it was actually going to read all the data on there, even if it was no nothing jargon that had been deleted already. Now it says, okay, I know this volume is only on these sections of the disk, only rebuild those. So it's really gonna speed up your rebuild times. Another thing that it's allowing you to do, and I'm really excited to test, is it allows you to repair a disk in line. That means if you have a disk that is failing, but is still working, what you can do is you can stick in another disk, assume you have an open slot, and actually rebuild the disk by cloning from the original disk. This is so much faster and more secure because you don't have to rebuild all the data from Parity Math. You can just clone, which is so much faster, and it's so much more secure for your data because now you can clone over the data and then once it's cloned over, pull out the dying drive. This is great for expansions or even for just rebuilds because now you never go into a reduced state. You always have the same amount of redundancy because by the time you're pulling out the dying drive, you've already got all the information on another drive in your system and it's just gonna carry over super fast. I unfortunately not gonna be able to test this because this unit only has a two bay NAS I might see if Synology will send me something, I don't know. Or I'll definitely be trying this once I upgrade the discs on my DS1819 Plus when the Synology DSM-7 is fully in release mode. I unfortunately rely way too much on my Synology NAS and so I just cannot risk having all the data lost or anything like that happen. But once the full release comes out, I'll definitely be trying this. All right, so now there's just two more things I wanna to touch on really quickly, but both probably are gonna be deserving their own videos. The first is definitely Synology Photos. So Synology Photos has a huge makeover and I'm actually really excited for this. A lot of my clients are photographers who use Synologies to store their photos and want to be able to start using it as a server and start sharing photos with clients and things like that. And this is where Synology is really trying to take off for both photographers who are professionals and just home users. And they're trying to merge these two into one. And overall, I think it's a really solid setup especially for something like a home user who wants to be able to have photos for everybody as well as have their own, everybody has their own photos. So let's go ahead and open up Synology Photos and I'll show you a quick preview of it. Though I will be doing a dedicated video on this shortly. So when you open it up, there are two different types. There are shared spaces 
and there are also personal spaces. So this is where you're able to differentiate between what you want other people on your network to see and what you yourself just want to be able to see. The one thing to note, like everything, whoever is a root user will be able to see everything, just not necessarily through this interface, but they can always go into home folders and see every single home folder. Just remember that. So from this, you can look at your photos and they're organized by tags and it's honestly a really nice way where you can flip through your photos. It's a really great thing and you can even start to share them. So say you've got a bunch of family photos and you want to be able to share them. If you've set up Quick Connect or DDNS with a port forwarding, you're able to share them and you can even start saying, okay, you need a password and it's going to expire. It's a really great setup for sharing a bunch of photos because in my experience, it's really hard to share a bunch of photos with people across a lot of different devices. Instead, what you can do is just upload them on your NAS and send out the link and you can even secure it with a password. One thing you do want to think about is the security of that. And I've got a video on how to secure your Synology NAS. But if you choose to go down that route, it's a really great service. And Synology has obviously put a lot of work into this. And so it feels very much like Apple Photos. It grabs the metadata from it, including the date, as well as the location, if that's on there. I use a GPS on my camera and it's really nice for that. And you can also go into albums and just see everything. It's got a bunch of different options for everything and it just feels a lot better. I'm really impressed by this and it's definitely gonna have its own dedicated video. So now we're gonna go ahead and close out of that and we're going to go into Synology Active Insight. And the way you get to Synology Active Insight is to go into their webpage and I've already gone ahead and signed in and this shows you all the different NASs you've got. For me, I've only got one that's on DSM-7, but it to tells you all the critical information you need, like disk utilization, the temperatures, and everything. It's a really great setup for people who are managing multiple sites, and I think this is a great service. One thing that is a downside of it is it is a subscription model, and so once the beta is over, you are going to have to pay for this. But realistically, that's just enterprise-grade stuff. For home users, you probably do not need this, but for enterprise users, this can honestly probably be a cost saver depending on how much it costs. Another thing is, as you noticed, I went to insight.synology.com. This is not hosted locally. This requires you to open up and send data to Synology. Now, I've not read their privacy statement, but a lot of companies just are not willing to do that. And if you're a company that's really reliant on everything on-prem, you probably don't want all of your stuff hosted in the cloud, especially because you don't have total control over it. That would be my one gripe if you are a company that is very important like that. But for the most part, it is not necessarily sensitive data going in there. It's just basically metrics for stuff like how much utilization is being used and what users are doing. But if you've got rules against that, you're probably not gonna be able to use it. But let's go into a couple of tabs. So we've got overview and that shows you all your hosts as well as anything that's critical or warning from account perspective. It's got basic metrics for your different NASes that are connected, including drive utilization, temperature, and I believe it takes the maximum for each of these, which is a great setup. Then if you go into host, you can actually start seeing specific things on it and start grouping them. So you can see what the network's doing, the performance and everything. And it's a really great way to get a very large view of your entire site. If you've got 50 or 60 offices spread out across the world, you can start seeing which ones are running into performance issues. In Synology's video, they even go deeper and you get to start setting alarms and things like that, which gives you really fine control if you are fully in the Synology ecosystem, which for a lot of businesses, I could honestly see that saving them a lot of money because cost of hardware is so much cheaper in the long run than cost of manpower to upkeep it a lot of time. And then clicking on a host brings you into deep information on it, including the past load average and things like that. And overall gives you a really clean interface into it. I am very impressed by what they've got here. It's got a ton of information and all of it you can add events to, to make sure you know exactly when something happens. This is great for audits and making sure everybody's got what they need to have. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that. And now we're gonna do basically closing thoughts. I am really impressed by the DSM-7 beta. Even though it took a lot longer than I originally said, that is okay. Something like a NAS operating system is not something that you should push out with bugs and then fix later because it's likely that businesses are relying on it to do their job every single day. 
you need to make sure that the operating system is just about perfect before releasing the release version. And that's what Synology seems to be doing. Once again, I would not recommend updating to the beta. I've experienced no issues, but it's a beta. If you really want to see it all, spin up a virtual machine and I'll have a tutorial on how to do that. But you really want to make sure your data is secure because you just don't know what's going to happen in a beta. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Go ahead and leave any tutorials you'd like to see me make in DSM-7 in the comments. And I've opened up SpaceRex for consulting. If you want to hire me, email me at will at spacerex.co. All right, that's it. Have a good one. Bye.